46 seconds of two damn logos. So, Coral, when you said you wanted an ocean view, you didn't think you were gonna get the whole ocean, did you? Fish real estate. Because a lot of other clownfish had their eyes on this place. Every single one of them. That's interesting, since while this movie gets a ton of actual real clownfish facts correct, real ones live in communities where only the alpha male and female are permitted to breed, making me wonder why there are so many damn clownfish clans in this tight vicinity to be competing for Marlin's and Emony. They're dreaming. Okay, sure, if you say so. But all of them have their eyes open. And they're basically zygotes right now, but whatever. Also, caviar I'd feel guilty about eating. We'll name uh, this half Marlon Jr. And then this half Coral Jr. I like Nemo. For all of them? Also, another interesting moment, considering that all clownfish are hermaphrodites, beginning life as males and then changing into females as the needs of the clan dictate. There's over 400 eggs. Odds are one of them is bound to like you. Foreshad irony. The Sparracuda wouldn't even know about the delicious clownfish babies if Coral hadn't darted down to protect them. Motherly instinct is addicted to kids. Horrible predator fish knocks Marlin straight into his home, where he just happens to be extremely safe from everything. Coral. Movie kicks you in the balls at the four minute mark, and your balls will not recover. Oh man. I'm only laughing because when I went to Wikipedia to research that earlier sin about breeding habits of the clownfish, I read that they're hermaphrodites. <laughs> so if the alpha female of the clan is killed, the strongest male remaining becomes female and takes her place, which means Nemo is destined to be a chick, and also means I think I just figured out the plot to Finding Dory. I promise I will never let anything happen to you. Again. Do I have one, two, three? That's all I have? Oh, you're okay. Father thinks that stripe counting is equal to perfect health. Though I should give him a break since his wife and 399 children died and left him on his own. How's the lucky fin? This is an asthma, but it might as well be. Child has some sort of affliction that makes survival harder cliche. We go out and back in. And then we go out and back in. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, wait to cross. Entire trip to school was devoid of other sea life and then bam, this one spot has all the neighbors. Also, can't you go over it? This crab gets his shell stolen, but then in the wide shot, the two fish bullying him have completely changed colors and the shell is gone. Either that or this school currently has two incoming students whose shells have been stolen by duo bullies, which would be weird, even in an ocean-based school. Hey, you're a cloudfish. <laughs> you're funny, right? Hey, tell us a joke. That's fish racist. Hey, tell us a joke. Funny well, actually, racist. that's a common misconception. Clownfish are no funnier than any other fish. It's also weird that we even refer to ourselves by the human-given name of clownfish, but that's another story altogether. <laughs> What's wrong with this fin? He looks funny. Kids. Let's name the zones of the open sea. I doubt it was this exact one, but I'm sending this motherfucker for being the same species or cousin species of that thing that killed Steve Irwin. So, so lyrical when you think thoughts that are empirical. Is this school or the Wiggles? Marty learns the school kids are headed for the drop-off 10 f***ing seconds after they leave, but arrive so much later than them at the actual drop-off that it's basically inconceivable. So let's name the species, the species, the species. You can teach a song naming all the species to fish, but that doesn't mean they'll know which species is which. All right, kids, feel free to explore, but stay Stay close. I see lots of problems with these instructions. Adults arguing about the child's safety fail to pay attention to the child cliche. This is exactly how Harry Potter lost his son in The Woman in Black. Fish only notice the scuba diver when we do, which is when he comes into frame. Why did no one see him the entire time Marlin, the teacher, and all the students were looking in this direction? Okay, so I've seen this movie before. I know the ultimate moral is that Marlin should let Nemo live his life and not be a nagging rules-based father. But the problem is, this scene that sets the entire movie in motion sort of proves that Marlin was right, and Nemo was a dumbass, right? These goggles fall off the boat here, but rest assured, not only will they be found long after this by Marlin and Dory, but they'll also end up being some sort of a goggles ex machina kind of thing. Despite them having fallen off the boat, basically in shouting distance of where all this began. Jeez, do these fish ever know when there's something dangerous in their immediate vicinity? Bruce turns out to be a nice shark, but still. Boy, oh, am a nice shark. shark. Okay, sure, you're a nice shark, but you did everything in your power to make the fish you brought here uncomfortable. Why not tell Dory and Marlin that you're a nice shark and have no intention of eating them before going to your meeting? The clownfish really go on tell us a joke! Man, sea creatures are really literal. Is it customary for scuba divers to write a return address on their masks? Thank God for Marlin's sake, right? And we gotta find a fish that can read this. Hey, look, shark! No, 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 no. After Marlin just sat in on a shark AA meeting and these sharks have done nothing to eat them, he still thinks they'll eat him, which causes him to panic and chase after Dory, which then starts a chain reaction to Bruce's relapse. Blood cocaine. He is Brucey! This shark has seen The Shining, or The Tonight Show, but probably The Shine. Regardless, it's ridiculous. You can read? I can read? That's right, I can read! But why can you read? You're a goddamn fish. If fish can read in this universe, why is Marlin so mind blown about it? Also, sure, discuss this when a shark is chasing after you. Inside jokes. Hello, little fella. Ah, dentists. He likes bubbles. That's great, but 
You were not on any of these walls a second ago in the wide shot. Kid, if there's anything you need, just ask your Auntie Deb. That's me. <laughs> or if I'm not around, you can always talk to my sister, Flo. Auntie Deb calls her sister Flo, which, if she weren't a reflection, would mean she's Aunt Flo. So there's that to think about. We got a live one! Can't hear you, Peach. I said we got a live one! Oh, yes! Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh what boy. do we got? Group canal. The f***? You've just established they can't understand her unless she has one or two of her arms off the glass. Then immediately ignore that rule? Hey, Nigel. What did I miss in my life? Yeah, none of the humans heard that big-ass pelican smack the window. None at all. The pelican broke a picture, which the dentist takes as an excuse to talk about his knees and directly addresses Nemo with the ultimate reason why he doesn't want to be in this aquarium right now. Plus, Nemo understands English, so that's an amazing series of fortunate events that happen just so he can plan his escape. She wouldn't stop shaking the bag. So her parents took the cutest picture of her with a dead fish after she murdered it. Ah! <sighs> Dory and Marlin went to the Prometheus School of Running Away From Things. Are you my conscience? Movie saves a ton of animation time and money by putting Dory and Marlin in the darkest place possible. Anglerfish decides to wait an insane amount of time to eat its prey, allowing Dory and Marlin to not only admire its prey attracting light, but to allow them to figure out that they're in danger. No eating here tonight! Woo! Eating, eating here tonight. tonight! Get the f out of there! They'll take us out of the tank, put us in the individual baggies, then we'll roll ourselves down the counter, out of the window- Holy sh! everything was good to the point of getting in the bags, but then you're going to roll the bags? How? And then the window is magically going to be open? How? All drains lead to the ocean, kid. And in one line of dialogue, Pixar killed thousands of real fish owned by stupid little kids who believe things. A little blue. She is sub-level, dude. Okay, so Dory is lying on top of this turtle's back, all unconscious and shit. But just a second ago, they went through some sort of roller coaster ride where Marlin had to hold on to Crush's shell. So who kept Dory in place? Which brings up another question. Why did Marlin have to hold on to Crush anyway? It's not like Marlin, as a free-swimming fish, was going to fall out of the current or anything. The only reason I can think of is they wanted to have this cool roller coaster ride before Marlin found Dory again and Crush wasn't really needed anymore. Two little fish have been searching the ocean for days! Good thing there's a good old oceanic network where all sorts of different species report the news of a father looking for his son. Does this happen every time a fish gets lost? Is Marlin the only dad who ever looked for his son in the ocean blue? Hey. Okay, so this time the dentist hears the giant pelican smacking the window. That's convenient to the tension of the scene, if you ask me. Don, kids. Well... Okay, first of all, you thought that was kids? You didn't see the f***ing pelican? How? Second of all, you're going to leave the window open after something you think was prankster kids throwing something at it when it was closed? I get that maybe the dentist is just so dumb he doesn't look over here. Fine. Whatever. But how is the pelican speaking English to fish without making any noise a human can hear? The word is he's headed this way right now to Sydney! Thanks to a dentist who labels his scuba masks just in case he loses it and can't afford a new one. Heroes get trapped in a whale cliche. You know... I wouldn't be surprised if he's out there in the harbor waiting for you right now. You know, trying to figure out how the f*** he gets on dry land to enter a dentist's office and help with your escape. Okay, so this whale has a uvula, and whales just don't have uvulas. Which is weird, because I was told the filmmakers really went into crazy detail on everything about all the creatures in this movie. You know, beyond the personification inaccuracies in order to tell the story. This dentist places every bit of information these fish could possibly need close by in every situation. The Aquascom is programmed to scan your tank environment every five minutes? Scan? What does that mean? Five minutes is a pretty small increment of time, but this instant scan starting right when it's being talked about is beyond convenient timing. Dennis gets the net taken from him, but he immediately has a plastic bag ready, which amazingly enough actually freaking works. And he does this despite simply retrieving the net from the water. Have you ever tried to catch a fish in one of these things? It's impossible. Marlin and Dory hop down the length of the pier instead of going at a right angle and getting in the water in two hops. It's the Prometheus school of running away from things for the second time in this movie. Not one single seagull gets through the sailboat pick set by Nigel. Not even one. Guy who clearly flushed the last fish decides, nah, I'll put a stinky old fish complete with a bag full of water into this everyday trash can. We've seen Nigel run into this window every single time he's flown here. But now that he's Marlin and Dory's chauffeur, the window is wide open today. Ring of fire! Somehow, despite the fact that this has never been done before, this shoots Gil to the perfect spot. <laughs> All drains lead to the ocean. Movie kills another several thousand pets with terrible, terrible science. No one's ever stuck with me for so long before. How would you know? <laughs> Nemo just happens to pop out 20 yards away from his dad after going through a water treatment pipe. I'm looking for someone too. Hey, we can look together. Maybe we're even looking for the same exact person. And there's no way you're gonna make me. Hilarious, but two things. Obviously, there's no way Dory has the strength to lift a freaking crab out of the water. But next, how does she even know there are hungry seagulls waiting above the surface? Even if she did, she forgets stuff easily. So I'm gonna play Buzzkill here. You know, like that's a surprise. There's no time! It's the only way we can save Dory! But there will be enough time for father and son to have this argument for some reason. Tell all the fish to swim down! Why haven't these fish ever thought to do this? 
If Gil can figure this shit out in an aquarium, surely millions upon millions of fish could have figured this out over the years and spread that knowledge. Oh, okay, Thomas Newman. You just revealed yourself with the soundtrack. You just had to go back to Shawshank one more time, didn't you? Just one more time. There! Movie that did all its killing in the first five minutes thinks we're gonna fall for this shit. Who is this Sandy Plankton that knows everything wrong? Sandy Plankton knew everything wrong back in 2003, but thankfully for us, he did not start a YouTube channel to share his thoughts. With fronds like these, who needs anemones? No! <laughs> so learning how to let his son take risks somehow also made Marlon good at joke telling? And these assholes still think this is funny enough even though they heard the gist of the joke five times while he was butchering it earlier? Fishfrogger. Now what? Exactly. I guess the movie is telling us they died in those closed bags because they couldn't get out, right? That's pretty damn dark. I'm a piranha fan the Amazon. Carl? No! That's a pretty big butt. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. <laughs> The boys always go fishing with first-timers. And they don't quit till they reel someone in. They'll take us out of the tank, put us in individual baggies, then we'll reel ourselves down the counter, out the window, on the lawn, and into the bushes, toss the straight and into the harbor. We'll name uh, this half Marlon Jr., and then this half... Seven. Seven Costanza. You're serious? Yeah. Okay. Maybe he only speaks whale. Please, Commander, you are our last hope. Excuse me. Yeah, I, I believe you have my stapler. <laughs> Avenge me! No! 279 miles northwest of Dutch Harbor, the Cornelia Marie is down an engine, limping through 25-foot seas and 40-knot winds. The rock to rock. You can't have seaweed as a house plant because you'd have to water it way too much. <laughs> hey Mitch, you wanna go out? No, I have to water the seaweed. Till when? Till forever. <laughs> Marlon and Dory hadn't stumbled onto the magical goggles with a magical address written on them, this could have been a really different movie. Anything ocean-based would be possible. Kind of makes you think about other ocean adventure and ocean creature stories, doesn't it? It's happy. Or the kind you might find on audible.com slash cinemasins. Like Old Man in the Sea. Or Moby Dick. Or 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Or Life of Pi. Or Yertle the Turtle. What do you think? I like turtles! With over 180,000 titles available at Audible, the options are basically limitless. What would you do? Not that kind of limitless. And if you go to audible.com slash cinemasins today, they'll give you your first audiobook free. Free. Zero cost of any kind. Guaranteed. Hey, I make no guarantee. No, really. First book is free. Promise. I swear, I swear. So go now to audible.com slash cinemasins and sign up to receive your first book free today. Come on, camp, move! Normally, I'd be here to warn you about an ad, but this time I'm here to warn you about a book. Actually, I'm not even really warning you very well, since I didn't start talking until after the image was already on screen. And now I'm already out of time. 